Before we get into convolutional networks, let's talk about working with images and automatic feature extraction. So in all the previous units, we worked with tabular data. Just for reference, tabular data is data where we have the training examples organized as rows and the features organized as columns. And here you see a snapshot of the iris dataset, where we have four different flower features. Now in this lecture, we are interested in working with image data. So for example, here you see an image of an iris flower. So the difference between the traditional approach and the modern deep learning approach using convolutional networks is that in the traditional approach, we manually extract the features from a raw data source, such as images. So on the left-hand side, we see an image of an iris flower where we have the petal and the sepal dimensions. And then we extract these by doing measurements, for example, applying a ruler and write down these numbers as a feature vector. So this would be a manual feature extraction step where we or someone else is taking these measurements. So when we use modern deep learning architectures, such as convolutional neural networks, we don't have to worry about manual feature extraction. Modern deep learning architectures, such as convolutional networks, perform the feature extraction implicitly. That means automatically for us. So this allows us to feed the neural network's image data as input directly. So we can skip the manual feature extraction step. So popular examples of convolutional networks are optical character recognition software that you may have already used on your phone. Or for example, if you are interested in identifying different birds in your garden, you can implement a bird classifier using a convolutional neural network. So one of the key features of convolutional neural networks are the convolutional layers. The convolutional layers are feature extractors. To make this a little bit more concrete, consider this architecture sketch of a typical convolutional neural network. So here this convolutional network receives an input image. Typically, that's an RGB image. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, which are the different color channels that make up this image. You can think of an RGB image as a stack of matrices. So each matrix has a height and a width dimension, and here we have three different matrices stacked together, a red matrix, a green matrix, and a blue matrix. So each block here in this figure represents one convolutional layer. And the convolutional layers, here we have five of them, are then followed by fully connected layers. So in this case, we have three fully connected layers, two hidden layers and one output layer. And actually, we can think of these fully connected layers as a multilayer perceptron. So a typical convolutional network architecture consists of a convolutional backbone and this multilayer perceptron unit. And so to draw the analogy to the previous units, here at this point, the multilayer perceptron receives something that kind of represents tabular data. So at this point, the, the multilayer perceptron part works exactly as before, except this tabular data here was implicitly extracted by the convolutional layers. So in previous units, we assumed that we or someone else did the manual feature extraction, so we worked with the tabular data directly. Here, we feed an input image that goes through different convolutional layers to have a tabular-like re representation that then feeds into this multilayer perceptron part. So in this unit, what's new is this convolutional part where we have multiple convolutional layers. So the focus of this unit are the convolutional layers, and we will discuss why exactly we need these. But before we get to explaining convolutional layers in more detail, in the next video we will talk about image data and its challenges.